How much closer are we to that ultimate objective, treating this like the common cold? Every time we get a new tool to use to treat people, to keep them out of the hospital, we get closer to that goal. And I think that the antiviral from Pfizer is one of those tools because it has a tremendous ability to prevent people from becoming hospitalized. And that is what this is all about. That's what flattening the curve was about, preserving hospital capacity. So I do think we're getting there. Obviously, the vaccine is the best way to get there. And we still have about 40% of the population that's not vaccinated, including 60 million people eligible to be vaccinated. That's the biggest thing. But I think the antiviral does bring us a lot closer to that. We are looking also at the Omicron variant and anecdotal data out of South Africa showing that perhaps it is less virulent. How much are we looking at that being a breaking point to the upside and getting us out of the pandemic? Have you got enough data to get a sense of that yet? The fact that all we're hearing about are mostly milder cases, not completely mild, there are people being hospitalized, but less ICU use, less oxygen use, I think that's reassuring because we haven't heard anything different. We know that in the U.S., I think only one of our cases had been hospitalized. It's a little bit difficult, though, to completely extrapolate that to the rest of the world or even to this country because South Africa is a country that's a little bit younger, has different comorbid conditions. We want more data on unvaccinated people, especially high risk. But it does seem that for the unvaccinated, it still might be just the same as Delta, and we may be trading Delta for Omicron. But if it's if it's more transmissible, but even just a, just a little bit less virulent, it may end up being a wash overall for what we're dealing with. So it all depends on how this all plays out in, in the U.S. We've been talking about how how the uh, two-course dose of either the Pfizer, BioNTech, or the Moderna vaccine does seem to have some preventative aspect against Omicron in terms of how ill you get, but not necessarily infection. It seems a lot less efficacious. People are saying that the booster is really important. I know you said you did not get a booster. Have you changed your mind based on some of the incoming data? No, I haven't because I'm, I'm 46 years old. I don't have any comorbid conditions, and I think that a booster will just inevitably just kick a, uh, a breakthrough infection down the road with these first generation vaccines. If you're somebody that's above the age of 65, have a high risk condition, got the J&J &J vaccine, those people absolutely should be getting boosted today. But for healthy people, I think that's not gonna change the trajectory of Omicron. It's not gonna prevent Omicron from hitting our hospitals. What's gonna prevent Omicron from causing a problem are first and second doses. And as you said, the Pfizer data shows that people are protected against what matters, severe disease with a two dose regimen if, if you're healthy. And I think that's what we need to be emphasizing because if we continue to boost to prevent mild illness, I don't think that this ever really ends. And I think we really have to focus on severe disease. And maybe there'll be a second generation vaccine that gives us different types of protection than our first generation vaccines. And and, and that that will change the equation. But right now I haven't seen anything that changes what I would say for, for healthy for healthy people. I might be in the minority, but there, there are a few of us that, that really are focused on hospitalizations and not so much preventing mild disease with these vaccines.